Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are gonna look at a Twitter conversation that sparked a lot of thoughts and had a lot of different layers to it, from data modeling to DAX, just a lot of Power BI goodness. Let's do this. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, so this all started with a tweet from Dewal Meta, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, where his tweet was all about why the last date DAX function was returning the end of the year and was he missing something? He included a little DAX snippet, which for me was the clue. In general, he thought it should have returned some date in January because that was the last date he thought of was in his model, but it was returning December 31st instead at the end of that given year. So that's what we're diving into, but enough of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop and take a look at what's going on. So what we can see here is I've just got two card visuals that are displaying a couple things. One's an actual total from a sales perspective. The other is my last date. And you can see here that I've got December 31st, which is similar to what DeWalt was actually hitting. And if we go and look at that, it is using my last date date measure. And what we can see here is it's just using the last date function and it's calling my order date column inside of my internet sales using the same syntax that was in the tweet, which is also using dot date on the end. That dot date is a tell. The minute I saw that, I knew what was going on. And what's happening here is we're referencing a date column from the under pinning table that is a hidden table as a result of the auto date time functionality inside of Power BI itself. The auto date time calendar features are on by default inside of Power BI desktop. We've talked about this a little bit before on this channel, I'll link to it up above. And let's actually look at the model. If we look at order date, we can see it's got a little drop down. We can go expand that and we've got a date hierarchy which has got year, quarter, month, and day. This date column is part of that hierarchy. That's the underlying table. And so this is being built using the calendar function and will include all of the dates for the given year that is the last year of this given range. And so that's why we're seeing December 31st. So I've got another item here. Let's go and open up my selection panel. I'll bring in another visual. And here I'm actually n removing that call to dot date. So if we look at my other measure here, we can see if I don't put the dot date, I actually get the last date that's in that order date column, which is September 2nd, 2019. So the reason we're getting December 31st is because we're referencing the underlying hidden table instead of the actual fact table, which has got the date range that we want. So the simple fix here is just remove dot date and you'll actually stop referencing that underlying hidden table and you'll actually reference the actual fact table of what you're trying to go after. But I would also add that really what you should probably also do here in this case is add an actual central calendar table to your model and disable the auto date time calendar functionality inside of Power BI. And again, I've got, we've got some videos that say how to do that, but if we want to just look like a cooking show, we can go jump to another model where I've actually got a calendar table built out. And here we can see the same thing, right? So we've got September 2nd, which is the last date in that column. And then we've got December 31st as well. However, that December 31st is actually coming off of my calendar table and there is no underlying table for that order date. You can see there's no drop down here because I added a relationship from my calendar table, which is marked as a date table and now that goes, that hidden table is gone from the order date column itself. So now if I need to do time intelligence, I can base it off of the calendar table. And I can also use that for comparing with other dates and just doing whatever time intelligence that needs to be done. The first layer was just, you know, we're referencing the dot date, which is that hidden item underneath. The second layer here is, you know, we probably just should have a central calendar table as part of this. There was another layer as well. Marco Russo chimed in on this Twitter thread and he added that, you know, you may also want to use max instead of last date because there's some implications that happen with last date. And I don't have time to go into that in this video, but what I will do is link down in the description below, I will have a link to the blog post that Marco referenced where he says, look at this blog post from a semi-additive approach 
to really understand how last date works and whether Max may be a better option for you. Reza Rad also chimed in on this Twitter thread as well, and he referenced a blog that he had, which talked about how you can actually go about doing this, which also uses the last date functionality. And I'll have a link down in the description below to that as well. And Dewal actually commented back saying, going through that blog post step-by-step step, got him the results that he needed. So that was awesome as well. Not a super long video, but I love the discussion that we had on Twitter. And if you're not on Twitter, I highly recommend you join up and partake in the conversations that are out there. Lots of awesome folks that are on there that can help you answer some questions that you need. And this was just a great example of just how layered different things can be and just the, the many facets of Power BI, which I love. I wanna pass this off to you. What do you think? Are you using the auto date time calendar? Are you using a central calendar? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, have you looked at last date versus max? Love to know that as well. Leave it down below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.